Hello friends, I welcome you in this lesson. So in this lesson, we will discuss the strategy to cover the Indian polity from the Lakshmikant book in the best possible manner, right? So you, you will get to know that what should be the best strategy, what should be the areas we, upon which we should focus so that we can cover this book in an easy manner. So first of all, we need to need, we need to know what is the syllabus of UPSC for the polity from the prelims perspective. So if we see the prelim syllabus, then this is the syllabus. So this syllabus has certain keywords. This syllabus is not defined in detail, but this is indicative in nature. And this syllabus does not clearly indicate the depth up to which the questions can be asked. It is just indicative. So Indian polity and governance, constitution, political system, panchayati raj, public policy, rights issues, etc. So this etc words is very very dangerous because they can include anything by writing the word etc. Still uh, depending upon the previous year question, we can identify that there are certain areas which are important and we will focus upon that thing only, right? Now, if we see the means, uh, so in the prelims, as I said, uh, constitution, political system, panjayati raj, public policy, rights issues, this is the syllabus. Now, constitution. So, constitution includes everything. It includes the different articles, schedules it includes uh, uh, you know everything political system that means the executive judiciary the uh, legislature everything panchayati raj that is the panchayat system in the villages and the municipality public policy includes all the government policies so the policies the bills the declarations everything that is done by the government or by the Supreme Court or any agency uh, authorized by the government that is public policy. Right issues, so rights of the minors, rights of women, rights of minorities, rights of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, all those people. So these rights issues is also part of the syllabus. Coming for the mains, in the mains there is a very detailed syllabus. In the mains, the GS paper 2 is the relevant paper. So here we can see Indian constitution which includes historical underpinnings, evolution, features, amendments, significant provisions and the basic structure. So everything, almost everything is covered in the uh, in the GS2. Then uh, functions and responsibilities of the union, states, then uh, separation of power, this separation of power, parliament and legislature and this judiciary, ministries, departments, then representation of people's act then quasi judicial bodies almost everything is part of the means however in the means the orientation is different the focus is upon current affairs and the focus is upon the analytical point of view the point is that we need to do the integrated preparation when we are reading the Lakshmi Gan, we need to know that there are certain areas which are to be read from the problems perspective and there are other areas which are to be read from the problems perspective so certain do's what should you do first of all you should cover the ncrt ncrt makes you familiar with the terminology you become familiar with the basic terminology so with the help of this terminology you can understand different provisions you can understand the concepts you can analyze and class 11th indian constitution at work this is the best ncrt that you should never miss Right, and if you want to do more, then there is old NCRT of 12th class that is democracy, democracy in India, issues and challenges. Right, so this first NCRT is important for the prelims, and this second NCRT is important for the mains. Then follow the syllabus, syllabus is really important. Now syllabus is not well defined. How to know what is included in the syllabus and what is not included. So to know that 
we should glance the previous year questions. In fact, before you read any chapter, for, for example, uh, you, you are going to study the chapter of fundamental lights. Before you actually start reading the chapter, please go through the previous year questions that have appeared from the same chapter. If you go through the previous year questions, you come to know which areas UPSC is focusing upon, what type of questions are being asked, is it about the concept, is it about the facts, is it about the interlinkage, is it about the current affairs and therefore you can actually focus, your mind becomes active. When you are reading, it is not passive. You are clear that okay, this area needs to be focused more. So you will devote more time, you will understand that thing more and there is a chance that there are maybe complete chapter which are irrelevant. You can, you can go through that chapter with a fast speed. You don't need to spend much of the time. See, friends, time management is very important to clear this examination because you don't have unlimited time, but you have huge syllabus. So smart preparation demands that you should be able to identify which areas to focus upon and which areas to miss. And friends, I'm telling you that 80% of the questions, they come from the selected areas. In the 20%, UPSC may do some twisting. But believe me, there are 80% areas which can be mastered and the question, most of the questions will be come, coming from there only. Highlight the keywords. When you are reading anything, highlight the keywords. That will help you at the time of revision. That you will help you uh, develop a you know familiarization with the book, etc. Then identify important articles. In the entire polity, you will find articles from the constitution of India. So there are important articles which you can't miss. For example, article 14 to article 21, right? These are, these are the articles for which you should have detailed understanding and you should note the numbering also. Then you have article uh, which are with respect to DPSP. You have some articles which are with, with respect to the parliament. Article of the CAG. Articles regarding the Supreme Court. So those areas which are asked more in the examination, you should know their article number also. However, you are not supposed to read and remember each and every article. You should solve the MCQs. So once you are done with the chapter, you go to the end of the chapter, you solve the previous year questions, you compare your answer and then identify that what mistake you did when you are reading the chapter. Also, you should do the practice MCQs which have been given in the Lakshmikant after every chapter, right? So that will develop your confidence. You will come to know which areas you are weak in so that at the number of revision, you can focus upon those areas also. You should try to link the current affairs. So for example, uh, if chief minister and governor are in news, whenever you are reading the newspaper, open the Lakshmikant and just read what are the provisions regarding the appointment of the chief minister. Read what, what is there about powers of the governor. So if you do that, then you actually uh, build, build the concept to a very deeper level. You can uh, analyze in the deep manner. Repeated reading. Friends, in the polity, this book is the best. Apart from this book, just read the NCRT and the current affairs. So, if you are having some problem, do the repeated readings. And still, if you are not able to understand, then you can have study material of some coaching institute or maybe you can join some classes. But this book will give a lot of confidence to you. Whether you join the class or not join the class, if you are reading this book, I am telling you, do the repeated revision, do the repeated readings. Now, there are certain things which you should not do, right? So what are the don'ts? Although this book is comprehensive and this book is really important, but you should not read this book cover to cover. Not everything is important. For that, you should have an understanding about the previous year question. Re don't read the original constitution. So some people will say, please buy B. M. Bakshi, right? I am saying don't buy this. Don't refer to any, uh, you know, constitutional provision. You are not going to become the lawyer. You are not uh, having the law as an optional subject. You have to have a generic understanding.
to the extent that you can understand the current affairs and you can solve the previous questions. That is enough. You don't need to make the notes. I'm telling you. This book is so vast. Almost, uh, uh, you know, every line has something. If you start making the notes, you will end up wasting a lot of time. Instead of making the notes, underline, highlight. Or you can just write the important key points on the blank space in the same page of the book. So avoid making the notes. Chronological reading of every chapter is not required. It is not that you will read chapter 1 and then you will go till end. You can start from anywhere. However, the chapter of the same block, they should be studied together. For example, chapter of the judiciary, they should be studied together. However, the chapter of the judiciary, executive, legislature, they need not be studied in any particular order. You can read them independently. Now, what should be the step-by-step -step approach? So, there are, uh, you know, if you are a fresher, then you should have three and three readings at least. So first two readings will be in detail and third reading will be kind of revision. And after that also you should do at least three more revisions before the examination, right? So first reading for the freshers, you should spend approximately three to four hours on a daily basis. And that thing you can do between 30 to 45 days. If you are a slow learner, you will take 45 days. If you are a fast learner, you can take 30 days also, right? And you should, you should actually read the chapter slowly, right? You should understand the concept. You should not be in a hurry to complete the syllabus. Although there should be some kind of target, but that should not cost you the understanding of the concept. So this is the first reading. What are the areas that I will be telling you in the upcoming slides? Then in the second reading, you should consolidate the, the, the method that you have already read in the first reading. So here you can spend uh, three to four hours approximately, loads, approximately for 15 to 20 days. So you should give 50% time in the second reading. In the third reading and after that you can spend between 7 to 10 days if you are taking 3 to 4 days on a daily basis. Now coming to the first reading. In the first reading what are the important areas, right? So in the first reading, day 1, you can go through the historical background and this is overlapping with the uh, history also. So if you are good in history, you can do this chapter in a fast forward manner. Then chapter 2 is about the making of the constitution. In the day two, you can go through salient features of the constitution, preamble of the constitution. And friends, you should go through every chapter. In this slide, I have highlighted every chapter's name with a different color so that you can identify that this red font color is important for the prelims. And this black color font color is important for the mains. Similarly, in the upcoming chapters, in the upcoming slides, you will see that if the font color is red, it means prelims. If the font color is uh, black, then it means mains. In the day three, chapter five and chapter six, citizenship is it is important, especially the concept of NRC is uh, in use in these days. Union and its territory it is also important because uh, there has been uh, the issue of JNK, right? <laughs> Fundamental rights, it is all time favorite of the UPSC. So here you should also understand the concepts. Then uh, DPSP and fundamental duties, they can be done on the same day. Chapters, day six, uh, amendment of the constitution. This is important and basic structure. Basic structure is important for the prelims as and, and it is also important for the mains. So there are some Supreme Court judgments. You can go through those judgments and you can have a good base in the mains examination. Day 7, you can have uh, emergency provisions. Day 8, parliamentary system, federal system. This is important for the mains. Day 9, central state relations. Again, it is important for the mains. Day 10, interstate relations. Then president and vice president. Then parliament. Then uh, cabinet committees and the parliamentary committees. Then parliamentary forums and the parliamentary groups. So here... President, Vice President, Parliament and the Parliamentary Committees, these are important for the prelims and the fonts in the red, uh, in the black color, they are important for the means. Day 16, Supreme Court and Judicial Review, then Judicial Activism, Judicial Activism and Public Interest Litigation, they are important for the means. Then Governor and Chief Minister, then State Council of Ministers, State Legislature, High Court, Subordinate Court, 
special status of Jammu and Kashmir, special provisions. So you can see that there are interrelated chapters. For example, these chapters are interrelated. These two chapters are, these four chapters are also interrelated. Then these two chapters are interrelated. Then these two chapters are interrelated. Try to cover uh, at least two to three chapters on a daily basis which are interrelated. Then Panchayati Raj, then Municipal Bodies, Union Territory, Schedules of Tribal Areas, uh, Election Commission, a Special Officer for Linguistic Minority, UPSC, SPSC, Finance Commission, National Commission for SC, National Commission, Commission for ST and C and AG, right? Then similarly, Attorney General of India, Advocate General of India, Niti Ayog, Lokpal, Lok Ayog, National uh, Human Rights Commission and in this way you can cover all the remaining chapters now coming to the day 37 day 38 day 38 this is important for the means very very important day 39 important for the means so all these chapters are important for the means second reading accordingly you can go through these uh, chapters so what i will do i will uh, paste the pdf of this particular uh, uh, ppt at the end of this at the below this lecture so that you can save it for your reference and you can uh, you know make a list and accordingly you can go through similarly these are the chapters we which you need to go through in the third reading you should try to interlink with the current developments right so in the first reading don't do much underlining don't do much highlighting your focus should be upon the concept you should your focus should be upon the uh, you know non-stop reading understanding reading understanding reading in the second reading your focus should be upon underlining highlighting and keeping in mind the important concept, you should also focus upon the previous year questions and the MCQs. In the third reading, you should revise fast. You should take take help of the underlining, highlighting, and the previous year questions. And you should list down your weak areas so that in the next revision you can focus upon those weak areas further. You should also interlink with the current affairs. So, for example, uh, if an NRC is news, then you should read the provisions of the citizenship. Then there are certain areas when you are uh, focusing upon the prelims. So there are certain areas which you should not miss. So executive, legislature, judiciary, bodies, special status, local bodies, amendments, and also, also the fundamental rights. You should not miss these areas if you are uh, willing to have the good marks in the prelims. Current affairs, for the current affairs, uh, these two newspapers are good. And especially these days, Indian Express is really very good. Uh, explained and the uh, editorial these are important for the uh, means perspective means gs paper 2 for the gs2 pins i will be making a separate video in this in this video our focus is upon the prelims only pib is also giving daily news so so you can read uh, this pib uh, from some weekly or monthly compilation of different uh, websites prs india this is giving uh, important uh, summaries of the important bills of the government, uh, the policies and the uh, decisions of the government. So for the polity, this site is really important. Yojana and Kukshetra. So you should read the uh, selected articles from there, especially for the main perspectives. India Airbook. In the India Airbook, there are certain chapters which focus upon the polity area. So you can cover those areas from the India Airbook. You should focus upon the schemes, programs, missions, laws and policies, the government bills and the governance act actions. So whatever is going on around you, you should keep a tap upon that. Now friends, you can ask, do we need the additional books apart from the Lakshmi Gang? I will say uh, it is very, very good book. Even you don't need to make any note. You don't require any other book. This book is a very, compi it is a compilation of various sources. So my recommendation is that please don't do any further reading, right? So with this, I complete this uh, session.